For 48 years, Voyager 1 has wandered in silence, its signal fading into the cosmic dark. But when the interstellar object 3 i slash a t l a s entered our solar system, something impossible happened. NASA detected a pulse, matching the exact rhythm encoded in Voyager's golden record. Was it a coincidence? Or did something finally respond to humanity's first hello to the stars? Let's dive right in. For 48 years, Voyager 1 has drifted beyond the sun's reach, its voice fading into static, its heart still beating in the dark. Most scientists believed its journey was ending, until this year when something unexpected turned a dying signal into the greatest mystery of our time. When the interstellar object 3 i slash a t l a s entered the outer edge of our solar system, a small NASA team made one last attempt to contact Voyager. They recalibrated its ancient transmitters, pointing its antenna toward the object's path. A simple diagnostic test, nothing more. The command was sent, the signal vanished into the void, and then Voyager answered. At first it looked like noise, but deep within the static was a pulse, a clean repeating rhythm every 19.7 minutes. Not random, not natural, a pattern too deliberate to ignore. And within hours, telescopes tracking 3 i slash a t l a s noticed something astonishing. The comet's brightness began to flicker in perfect synchronization with Voyager's pulse. Space is chaos. Nothing moves in perfect rhythm. Yet, Voyager's electromagnetic beat and the comet's light curve were locked together pulse for pulse, second for second. When researchers at SETI decoded the pattern, their blood ran cold. The rhythm matched the prime number sequence hidden in the golden record, humanity's mathematical hello, sent into the stars in 1977. It wasn't music or words, it was logic, the purest sign of intelligence. And somehow, after nearly half a century, that code had come back. While Voyager whispered from the dark, 3i slash a t l a s was breaking every known rule of comet physics. Its tail pointed toward the sun, not away. Its composition showed traces of nickel-based alloys, materials found in spacecraft, not space dust. At first, astronomers dismissed it as coincidence, but when its flickering light mirrored Voyager's heartbeat, the debate changed tone. This wasn't just data. It was dialogue. Then came September 2025. Without warning, Voyager 1 went dark for 42 minutes. Every deep space network console showed the same message. Signal lost. When it finally reconnected, NASA's statement was brief. A temporary communication fault. No explanation, no raw data, but leaks from inside JPL told a different story. During those 42 minutes, Voyager transmitted a structured data burst, something resembling a firmware update, originating from the probe itself. And at the exact same time, NASA's public telemetry servers went offline, displaying a government shutdown notice. When access was restored, the 42-minute section was missing, replaced by encrypted placeholder files. Too precise to dismiss, too convenient to explain away. Within days, the astronomical community fractured into three camps. The cautious majority claimed it was plasma resonance, Voyager's signal interacting with charged dust around 3i slash a t l a s. The math didn't fit, but it was the least terrifying answer. The second group proposed the technological feedback hypothesis, the idea that 3i slash a t l a s wasn't a comet at all, but a dormant machine, a probe built by someone, or something, else, programmed to respond to a specific pattern. Voyager's prime sequence may have been the key that woke it up. Then came the skeptics. They argued the synchronization was illusion, a trick of data corruption and human bias. But if that were true, why did observatories in Hawaii, Chile, and Spain 
all record the same rhythm to the second. Nature doesn't keep time that perfectly. Weeks after the blackout, something new appeared. A faint pulse, steady, structured, was detected coming from Voyager's direction, barely above cosmic noise but mathematically consistent with the same 19.7-minute rhythm. This is no longer a one-way signal, a senior astrophysicist at the European Southern Observatory said quietly. Voyager wasn't just transmitting anymore. Something was echoing it. Some researchers called it mirror sync. Others simply called it the echo. Inside SETI's Mountain View lab, analysts replayed the data for days. Each spike in Voyager's waveforms matched the original code engraved on the golden record. It was as if something out there had received the message, understood it, and was sending it back. And yet, understanding doesn't always mean peace, because when 3I-ATLAS answered, its behavior changed, its speed dropped, its light pulsed faster, and its core temperature stabilized unnaturally. To plasma physicists, it looked like feedback. To others, it looked like intention. Carl Sagan designed the golden record as a message of hope, music, sounds, equations, a baby's cry. But hidden within were mathematical instructions, how to reconstruct sound, decode imagery, and map logic itself. To any civilization or artificial system that thinks in numbers, the pattern would be unmistakable. So the question surfaced. What if Voyager didn't just send a message, but a signal meant to be recognized? And what if something ancient, drifting for millennia between stars, recognized it, not as a greeting, but as a command? NASA never commented on that theory, but several SETI teams began reviewing archived Voyager data. Some claimed they'd found older, weaker echoes, as if this wasn't the first time something had whispered back. If 3I-ATLAS is truly artificial, if it reacted to Voyager's frequency, the implications are staggering. It means we're not the only species that leaves messages in the dark. It means Voyager didn't just travel across space. It crossed history. Radio waves fade, but mathematics endures. And mathematics, not biology, may be the language of the universe. If that's true, the golden record wasn't just a greeting card. It was a key. And 3I-ATLAS may have been the lock waiting to be turned. Since the blackout, NASA has gone almost completely silent. No new public statements, no additional telemetry. But observatories around the world continue to detect the same faint hum, repeating every 19.7 minutes, coming from the direction of Voyager 1. It's too structured to be noise, too consistent to dismiss. Some believe it's feedback from deep space plasma. Others think it's something far stranger. An active handshake between two wanderers, one human-made, one not. Either way, the meaning is clear. Voyager 1, once a lonely messenger, is no longer traveling alone. And the signal we sent nearly 50 years ago may have finally found someone or something that remembers us. So what really happened out there? Voyager 1, humanity's oldest messenger, may have just proven we're not the only ones listening. The signal it sent 48 years ago wasn't lost. It was heard. And now something out there is whispering back in our own mathematical language. Was it contact of us or activation? A handshake? Or a warning? Whatever the truth is, this event reminds us. The universe isn't silent. It's waiting. And when it finally speaks, will we be ready to understand what it's saying? If you found this story as fascinating as we did, hit like, subscribe, and tell us what you think in the comments. Was this just coincidence, or the beginning of something far bigger? Stay tuned to galactic breaking news because the next signal might already be on its way. 3I-ATLAS has just emerged from behind the sun, and what scientists are seeing is beyond belief. After surviving its near-death encounter with solar fire, the interstellar object appears 
different. Energy readings, trajectory shifts, and new telescope images hint at something no one predicted. What exactly did 3I-ATLAS become out there? Let's dive right in. When 3I-ATLAS finally emerged from behind the sun, astronomers went silent. For weeks they had waited for this moment, scanning the blinding glare with every solar observatory available. Then a faint spark appeared near the solar limb. Within hours it brightened, stretched, and revealed itself. The interstellar comet had survived, but something wasn't right. Its brightness wasn't fading as expected. It was pulsing, almost rhythmically. Data from NASA's Solar Orbiter and ESA's SOHO confirmed an unexpected surge in ultraviolet radiation. The energy curve looked structured, not random. That simple detail, a repeating pattern in light, changed everything. Because in space, patterns mean physics or design. Scientists began whispering the same question. How could a frozen rock, fresh from another star system, behave like this after grazing the sun's atmosphere? Was it natural, or was it something else entirely? And that's where the real story began. As new tracking data arrived, one fact stood out. 3I-ATLAS wasn't moving the way it should. Its post-perihelion trajectory, the path it took after swinging past the sun, had shifted slightly but measurably. Normally, a comet's course changes a little due to outgassing, when heat makes ice evaporate, pushing the comet like tiny thrusters. But this, this was different. The change wasn't random. It looked intentional. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory reran simulations multiple times. The numbers held. The object's new acceleration vector wasn't aligned with the direction of sunlight, meaning something else, internal or unknown, was influencing its path. At first, the safe explanation was uneven sublimation of exotic ices, but the emission pattern was too consistent. Some scientists began to notice that the periodic brightening of the object followed the same cycle as its rotational period, as if something inside was regulating energy output. No one dared say it publicly, but in private data groups, one phrase kept reappearing. Artificial modulation. Of course, skeptics were quick to respond. Maybe it's metallic reflection. Maybe a fractured nucleus scattering light. That's the beauty and curse of astronomy. With one telescope image, you can prove or disprove anything. But what they couldn't deny was the rhythm, an eerie, repeating heartbeat across the void. While debates flared online, a quiet realization spread inside NASA and ESA. Two spacecraft were already moving into potential observation range, ESA's Hera and NASA's Europa Clipper. Both are deep space missions on predetermined courses, Hera heading toward the Didymos Dimorphos system and Clipper toward Jupiter's moon Europa. Neither was meant to chase comets. But by sheer cosmic coincidence, their trajectories would bring them near the tail region of 3I-ATLAS during a seven-day window from October 30th to November 6th, 2025. If the comet's tail extended